the tale teller. Let me tell you a story. A storytelling podcast narrated by Glenda Villamar. Episode 9, an excerpt from The Midwinter Visitor by Toby Hall. Nicholas woke with a start. He felt a chill go through him. He glanced over into the living room. The fire was still roaring in its hearth, so he couldn't have been asleep long. He turned his attention to the door. Nicholas had taken to sleeping in an armchair he had moved into the hallway, so that if there was any disturbance outside, he would be ready to deal with it quickly. There was no crack in the door nor anything else that would account for the sensation that had passed through him. Despite the apparent ordinariness of the situation, Nicholas felt uneasy. He reached down and picked up the poker that lay beside him, then got to his feet. A shape began to materialize in front of the doorway. Nicholas blinked and focused his eyes, thinking he must still be dreaming. He realized that he had been mistaken. This thing, whatever it was, wasn't materializing in front of the doorway. It was coming through it. He pinched himself several times, each one harder than the last, in an effort to wake himself up, but to no avail. He realized with horror that he must be awake and that this phantom was real. A second thought entered his mind, that this phantom was the visitor Mr. McCarthy had warned him about. If that was the case, then all his preparations had been for naught. How had Mr. McCarthy expected him to refuse admittance to this, whatever it was? As the phantom hovered in the doorway, the shock got the better of Nicholas, and he crumpled into the armchair in a dead faint, the poker hitting the floor with a loud thud. The phantom stayed where it was, hovering and shimmering. What a predictable response, it said. When Nicholas came to, he found that the phantom was still hovering in the doorway. Now that he knew for sure that he was not dreaming, Nicholas was even more terrified. What was this thing, and what did it want with the McCarthys? It seemed to be regarding him with a curious expression. At least, that was what Nicholas thought. Its head was tilted to one side, as if it was examining him, but this was the only clue. The phantom was featureless, a man-shaped being, dressed in robes and shrouded in mist. Where the head and limbs would have protruded from the clothes, there was only blackness. Then the phantom spoke, breaking the pall of silence that hung in the air. You are not McCarthy. No, the family are on holiday. Despite his nerves, Nicholas knew that the only way to get answers would be to engage in conversation with this unearthly visitor. They asked me to look after the house while they were away. How did you know I wasn't McCarthy? I have been watching them. I've been waiting for this day. What, Christmas? Have you a present for them or something? McCarthy has something to give to me. If it is Christmas, why are you not with your family? Why do you sit in this empty house? I have no family of my own. No close relations, anyway. Mrs. McCarthy met me in the village and asked if I would be interested in looking after their house while they were away. They're paying me well enough, though, so I don't mind. The phantom shook its head, or at least shook where its head would be if it had one. That is a shame. A man should have his family by his side. It is also a shame that McCarthy has got you involved in our business. Oh, and what business would that be? I am involved now, as you say, so surely you can tell me. The phantom pondered this for a minute. Very well, I shall tell you, but not here. Take this chair back to the living room. My appearance brings with it a chill. It would do well for you to be by the fire. The phantom drifted past Nicholas and into the living room. Nicholas picked up the chair and followed. Nicholas sat by the fire, warming himself. The phantom was hovering in the chair opposite him, trying to give the illusion that it, too, was sitting down. Are you sitting comfortably? Nicholas nodded. Then I shall begin. To hear the rest of the story, go to Toby Hall's YouTube channel. Toby is a writer based out of the UK. You can follow Toby on Twitter, at Alive Toblerone, and you can also follow Toby on YouTube, at Toby A.J. Hall. 
Thank you for listening. We'll be back soon with a new tale to tell.